Hello everyone. I am here today to let you guys, Bobby's eating, that's what all that noise is. But I'm here today to let you guys know that I'm going to be documenting and um, sharing my IVF experience with you all, which means two things. The first thing is unfortunately my, um, my two last rounds of the embryo transfers didn't work which really does suck and I was really down about it. I still sort of am. But the second thing is that I get this opportunity to help um, as many women as I can who are struggling with fertility and may need to go down this road as well. So I've done it twice before. This will be my third round of IVF, but I haven't actually done it for two years. So I've had my baby um, and I have my previous success story in another link. I'll probably link that below. But um, this round is a fresh round and I, I'm i super keen to get into it. I just want to sort of get it over and done with. I'm starting as of now, so I'm about to do my first injections. This is my um, schedule, my hormone schedule. I think I've got three, I think I've got three injections to do today and we'll be increasing that on day five so um <laughs> good luck to me good luck to my marriage while i do this on um a lot of hormones i get a little bit crazy and that's totally normal guys you will experience different moods and well you may not but you're very lucky if you don't but i experience full-on mood swings and i'm usually a very level-headed person so uh that's a very normal thing to go through i get angry personally I get very angry. I don't get sad so much. I just get very angry. So I can't wait to share, share that with you all. Pretty much, yeah, I'm excited to uh, document all of this and all of the ups and all the downs. That's about it. So here we go. Good luck to me. I'm hoping for at least three embryos. That would be so amazing, but I've only got one ovary. So that's wishful thinking um it's just one would do the job I just want one more baby so just one embryo that sticks would do the job and it only does take one so I don't know I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully there are a couple of other people going through this with me at the same time so if you are reach out to me and we can do this together so here is my starter pack for IVF we've got my um injections here they live in the fridge so that's my needles in there. I'll get one out soon to show you. My Sharpie's bin, my needle pack, and some pills I have to take. So, keen. So, here are my injections. There's one type. There's another type. And I have another type inside, but I don't have to take them till day five. Um, this one I have to mix myself, so I'm probably going to have to refresh my memory, go watch a tutorial on that, because I can't actually remember. And these ones are pretty straightforward. You just flick them over. So, woo, let's do it. Okay, wrap two. The first needle. I'm a bit nervous because I had a blood test this morning and it really hurt. So I'm actually shitting myself a little bit. Um, okay, let's we'll just do it. I'm just going to do it. I do needles very slowly. And that's a tip for everyone. If you're going to do your own needles, I like to do mine super slow because I can control, you know, the pain and I can go slower if it hurts or faster if it doesn't hurt and yeah so I'm just gonna do it doesn't hurt too bad actually there we go when I push the product in it does hurt a bit more guys one done and I'm alive and standing Okay, so this whole thing now goes into the bin. Okay, so I've just made up my other needle and drew it back. So here's my second one. Hopefully this one's a bit better. I was a bit rusty on the first one. I like to do it a little bit lower. And then I'm pushing in the liquid. Done. Done and done. Put that in the Sharpies bin. Finished. So there it is. 
day one done and dusted. Um, I feel like it's worse in your head. Like if you just go in and do it, get your needles done, smash them out in one go, um, it's actually fine. I think the hardest part is the um, hormonal side of it. And then of course, like if you've got endo or anything that flares with hormones, that comes as well. But I will try and show you guys how to deal with that as well. Hey guys, I have to introduce another needle tonight, which I'm so not keen for. Last night I was injecting and I hit like a blood vessel in my stomach and it started, like blood started oozing out. It was just like, it's just not for me. Um, also, I am getting super um, drowsy from the melatonin that I'm taking. I'm on like five milligrams of melatonin every night and it's just making me really drowsy. And during the day I have absolutely no energy and um, I'm trying to deal with the fatigue and like the life sucked out of me. Um, super boring mum at the moment. I have no time or energy for like loud laughing games and songs and stuff. So that's a bit of a struggle. But other than that, everything's going really well. I have my scan on Wednesday to check how my eggs are developing. And um, other than that, can't complain. Well, I can complain, but I won't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I should get to my needles now, so. Today I went from two needles to three needles um, and I'm on quite a high dose and the needle I just injected, I think, I don't know if it's from the needle that I just injected or it might be a coincidence, but I, every time I inject, especially I remember from the last round with this needle, I get an endo flare and my belly swells. I don't know how or why, like why that, that happens or if it's even possible, I'll show you. So I literally look pregnant <laughs> and it is quite tender. Um, it's just all down here. Like it's, if you guys, if anyone has endo or like those sort of problems and you're on IVF and you do get the end, like the swollen flare, just know that it is normal and it is so worth it. I didn't, last time when I was doing IVF, I obviously didn't have Zani, so I know what it's like to be doing this when you don't have a kid to motivate you, but the pain that I'm feeling with this is so minute compared to the love that it will get you when it works. So just push through and know that you're not alone and you're not crazy and all of this is worth it, hopefully. Guys, I am so drowsy so this round has been different to my last two rounds I think I'm on different I'm on different things but this round I am experiencing no like emotional mood swings I'm like super calm but I'm really drowsy all the time and like at night I am so tired but I, I still have to take this tablet that causes drowsiness. And then I'm just so tired and I take it and I'm zonked. And then I'm finding it hard to wake up in the morning and then when I am awake, I'm just like, this is me. So that's where I'm at, I'm on I'm day six. So guys, we are about to scan my eggs, see how they're going, hopefully. Hopefully it's good news. Um, but yeah. So we're on what day? Eight. Day eight so far, and we're expecting to see that the eggs have progressed. And yeah, there's a few eggs there. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. Let's see how we go. Hey guys. So we just obviously had a, a check in with um, Dr. Salisbury to see where our eggs are sitting. So basically every seven days, you have a check-in to see if your egg follicles are growing. Um, seven days in, we should be sitting at around between the 13 and say 15, with them growing a millimeter every day. At the moment, we counted nine eggs. So it doesn't mean that all nine will be successfully extracted, but um, it definitely is the best that we've had so far. So sitting between 13 and 15 um, millimeters per egg, 
with it growing each day. So hopefully by Friday we'll have eggs at around, Friday, Saturday we'll have eggs around that 15, uh, sorry, 16 to 18 mark. And to further that, we've also, um, we've got no endometrioma as well. Oh so, yeah, that was a beauty, that one. Beauty, yeah, so no endometrioma. So for those, for anyone out there that is struggling with an endometrioma, um, which is a cyst in their ovaries, guys, it isn't doom and gloom sometimes they do go away sometimes they need to be surgically removed we normally would get six eggs so we normally counted six eggs when we had zani um whereas today we counted nine so it just goes to show uh how much better things have gotten for us hello everybody we are on our way to the hospital for egg pickup today um we're hoping to get at least five good eggs that would be really good if that happened and today I'm finding out if I'm able to actually get a transfer this month because it looks like from my last couple of blood tests that my progesterone has been creeping up and I might not be able to get a transfer this month this month um, which really sucks but I'll probably use that gap I have in between to get really fit and healthy and prepare myself for the best possible outcome for a transfer that I can get and how are you feeling very relieved. Giorgio just um, provided his specimen. <laughs> which is, which is, let me see the camera. Oh wow. Which is probably the most awkward thing ever. I know it sounds so simple and so, so straightforward, but it's fucking. So yeah, basically, Giorgio just had to provide his sperm in a cup, which is actually in my. Um, in my shorts because you have to keep it warm <laughs> it's so gross and yeah i'm going to get put under today um <laughs> i go under anesthetic and they retrieve my my eggs and um then this afternoon they'll combine the two the sperm and the egg and they'll try and create embryos so i will let you know how i go with the egg pickup and i'll also let you know how we go with the embryos um we just need one and hopefully we get one. All right, so we have just gone through. <laughs> um, take two. Take two. Egg retrieval. Um, initially we saw nine eggs, so nine follicles. Now that doesn't mean that every time that those nine follicles that- They're follicles. Follicles, sorry. Those nine follicles will be um, filled with an egg. Sometimes it's just a, a fluid sac. Um, we were very lucky to get five, so Five being one of our higher numbers. We got six the first time when we got three. So very, very happy with five. Um, if we can get two to three frozen eggs, very optimistic. But frozen embryo. Be, frozen e embryo, sorry, would be awesome. Um, but yeah, all in all, a good day. Unfortunately, we can't do a, um, what, what would you call it? A transfer. A transfer without, it, without them being frozen. But hey, there's worse things that can happen. So yeah, that's us checking in. Signing off. All right, thanks guys. You're the worst. <laughs> you didn't even do it. I always want to do that. <laughs> hey guys. Um, I thought I would tape this video while I'm pretty much at a low point. I was, I was going to tape it tomorrow when I like have my hair done and my makeup done and I'm feeling a bit better but I just thought I would jump in while it's at its realist so um, our IVF cycle that I've just done was pretty disappointing um, I only got one fertilized embryo so far and that still has a couple of days of growing so we're not even sure if it'll make it to freezing and I have to freeze it because um, I'm unable to get a transfer as my hormones are out of whack so it's just been a really shit couple of days I also then after surgery got gastro which is probably why I'm feeling so shit because I haven't really eaten in two days I just can't stomach anything and yeah, I'm not feeling the best, but um, I'm not even going to try and be positive right now because I just feel like shit. So if this happens to you, it's okay to feel like shit. You can be angry at the world. You can 
just want to give up but don't just have a moment of it so yeah I'm just going to sit in my weird mood that I'm in and absorb it and then hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be ready to I don't know whatever happens next to conquer it hey guys um today we are going to be giving our final update on what happened with our um, IVF cycle and our results and also I posted a week ago a um, Q&A like you all could send in your Q&A's with IVF so I'll go through and answer the most frequently asked questions with that so, um, my surgery went really well and we did get the five eggs we were hoping for I had nine follicles but four of them were premature they couldn't get the, um, the egg out so they happened to get five so I was really happy we were both really happy with that result uh, the next morning, so you wait a night and they um, combine Giorgio's sperm and my egg and overnight they grow your embryos. So we woke up and we rang the doctor and um, when he picked up he sounded pretty disappointed so we knew like it wasn't the best news. Um, he told us that only one embryo had successfully fertilized which was like a kick in the gut it was a kick in the guts but at the same time you you know we still had one so um fast forward what three four days or no four five, five days and uh and then we still had one um yeah so it's really we're really lucky that the, the one embryo that did fertilize survived the five days of growing because a lot of them in the past for us have dropped off and mm -hmm. you know only a couple survived so the one we had um, is now in the freezer so I was unable to get a transfer as well because my progesterone was far too high for a transfer and I'm just giving my body a break um, for a couple of months so I'm ready and fresh to get a transfer next year sometime so at the moment I'm mentally a lot better um, I, I was really n not okay last week um, so this what you're seeing isn't just like okay we got the news and we're fine like we were both pretty gutted but um, we're really focusing on that one embryo and we're focusing now on um, maximizing my health and getting me to a point where I am really strong mentally and physically for the transfer just going on about going off that the frozen embryo transfers and the IVF cycle for me are so different so the IVF cycle that I just showed you guys was injecting for um, two weeks and then getting surgery and then waiting for the results and that for me is a lot easier than getting a frozen embryo transfer because you're on different hormones for the transfer and the hormones I'm on for the transfer affect me a lot more than those needles do like the needles I'm fine I'm pretty much myself I just put on I put on like five kilos but that's the only downside to the IVF cycle the the transfer that I get <laughs> I like turn into a different person on these hormones that mm. have to be put on and it's really hard for us as a couple to handle that because I'm not myself so he's like dealing with his someone who's not his wife pretty much. So that's progesterone so normally like when you're injecting you're pumping estrogen and you're pumping and you're on melatonin so it's like this mellow person you know not the world's most um, I guess you don't have the world's most amount of personality but at the same time I'm not mean you're not mean not it's not mean it's just like Sorry. say if I've had a busy day and then I come home and I just get hit with something I'm like, oh, once, and yeah, we're, we're not good as a couple when I'm on those hormones so a lot of couples do struggle mm. with the um, hormone side effect and that's completely normal and just try and tell yourself like it's, it's gonna pass. It's gonna pass, and you, the husband needs or the partner needs to um, remember that it's, it's not actually them, and they probably don't realize they're doing it, or if they do, they can't control it. So I'm gonna go through um, my questions that I got from everyone. The first, I had a lot of questions about how expensive is IVF here in Australia. It's um, for a whole transfer, like from egg pickup to a transfer as well, with all the hospital costs, your anaesthetic, and your doctor's costs comes in at about $14,000 AUD. If you're just looking to freeze your eggs, it's not as much as that, but in the future when you have to um, fertilize, it all adds up to that anyway. So it is quite expensive, which puts pressure on a lot of couples as well. Um, yeah, 
It is a lot. Why did we opt for IVF was another a big question. So we have to do IVF to be able to fall pregnant because I got my fallopian tubes removed from my endometriosis. So I can never, ever, ever fall pregnant without um, IVF. So we're really lucky that that is something we can do. Is egg collection painful? Um, no. So after the egg collection, you have period pain, um, but it's not it's not painful. You're 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 asleep, so you get put under completely. It is a surgery, so you do have the downtime with the anaesthetic um, and take the day off work. But other than that, it's not painful. A couple of people asked, have you ever considered egg donors? So um, using Georgia sperm and someone else's egg. Um, not yet. We haven't considered that. Um, just because I am able to um, do IVF and, and get eggs at the moment, even if they are very minimal, I can still try so we haven't really entered that headspace yeah okay and then another question is how did you deal with the transfer not working i'm about to have my second and have five embryos left so it's it's it sucks when you get a phone call and they're like sorry your transfer hasn't worked or sorry you can't even get a transfer it's just like mm. oh you just get on with your day but you are a bit sad um yeah, there's nothing you can do so didn't work you can't stressing and being sad won't make it work so you've just got to try and pick yourself up yeah and look at the positives like in saying that you gotta go through the emotion at the same time you can't just go hey this is all rainbows and butterflies like, yeah the world we live in now is so pc and so fucking like yeah it's great where it's not like we're not telling you hey we've got one embryo and we're over the moon but we are saying you know, hey, we still have that one embryo. So try and look at the positives, but also take, you know, take a couple of hours, take 24 hours, how, however long it is for you, to sit and go, okay, well, this is the result that I got. Don't necessarily see it as doom and gloom, but this is the result that I got. Acknowledge it and go, this is my game plan moving forward. What a lot of people don't know when we're having a conversation as well is typically out of two ovaries, you get um, between, you know, say 15 and, and, and 20 eggs. So almost 10 eggs per per ovary. Um, that's providing that there's no like disease or anything uh, in those ovaries. Um, we only get the we only get say five because of we've only got one ovary to deal with. Um, but yeah, so don't think oh if I go do IVF I'm gonna spend fifteen thousand dollars and there's only one chance. Typically speaking, you'll probably if you have the two ovaries that are working fine, you'll probably get more than yeah. um, one egg. Or, uh, one egg that one embryo one embryo, one embryo yeah. yeah everyone's asking how are we coping as a couple yeah how do you cope as a couple I think when you sign up to get married or you sign up to be with someone long term and, and, and go through this process your end result is what you're sort of looking forward to um, we're blessed because it's happened to us in the past and we sort of know the emotions um, when we're going through it don't get us wrong we're like maybe we shouldn't try maybe this is going to test us too much maybe it's going to push us over the edge but i think they're passing words and they're things that they're, they're conversations that just happen in the heat of the moment um when we both reflect back and and look at it we're like no we both want this we understand that we're, we're going for it we do have um a point where we're probably not going to try again um, yeah so i have a max amount of rounds that i think i can deal with i mean i might get there and be like georgia i've got another round in me mm. but i think that I've just put a number on how many maximum rounds I'll do because it does take a toll on our lives and my life especially living month by month and waiting every second of the day just waiting for news and hoping for things and just always in limbo it's just a lot of unknown and I feel like my months are going quicker because I'm always waiting for the next month next to happen month, yeah. so I don't want I don't want that to be my life for a very long time mm. so I've put like a, a max amount of time that I will do this and then you know, if if we're hopefully we get a, a baby out of it, but if not, then we've got Zani, and I have a lot of questions saying, will you adopt? Um, I probably just focus on Zani, and um, yeah, enjoy her and give everything all of our love to her. I hate seeing always on YouTube and Instagram where everybody's like, oh, I did this, I did that. Yeah, that's what we did, and this is what we're doing, and this is our story and our journey, but you've got to understand that you're on a different journey. 
It might be similar, you might be able to get some takeaways, um, but you've got to really reflect on who you are as a person and what your life is and what your qualities are. Our quality is um, being positive and also like we've probably got a bigger pain threshold. Uh, whereas some other people might go, no, that's actually going to get me down. And other things get us down, you know, where we don't have that pain threshold. But you've got to understand what you want to do and, and, and how you want to attack it. Well said. Um, so I, I only have a couple more um, questions, but this one was a big one. Can you select the gender when you're doing IVF? Um, it's illegal in Australia to select the gender of your child. Anyway, we only have one embryo, so no. But um, even if we wanted to, we couldn't. And even if we, even if you could, I wouldn't. So um, the answer to that is no. How old are the embryos when they're implanted? So your embryos are typically five days old when they're implanted into you. Ours, for some reason, are slow growers, and they always every single embryo I've ever had grow to day six. So at day five, they're looking at a day four, even Zani, and um, so they they grow it to a day six. So it's at a day five. Um, transfer yeah and then when they implant it you find out two weeks later so typically when you find out you're around is it six weeks or five and a half weeks five pregnant and, yeah. and the last question I will answer is there's a lot of questions about weight gain so when you do IVF some women don't experience weight gain and some women do um, I, I'm really sensitive to the hormones and I'm on a really 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 high dose of what they typically give someone. So I've put, I put, I stack it on in IVF and I'm not eating any differently. I'm just, it's just all coming on. So yeah, you can exercise through IV, you can't exercise when you get a transfer, but you can still exercise through your um, stim cycle. So um, I tried to do that. I trained maybe three days a week mm -hmm. when I was um, injecting and still put on weight. Um, and now that I'm off all the hormones, I'm watching really carefully what I'm eating and through the, the Christmas season, I'm going to have to try and be really careful. Um, but it's more like we know that if Des gets physically fit, like eats really, really nutritious food, that's going to put her mindset in a different place and she's going to attack the situation like, with a lot more confidence. Yep. So And you can do all the right things and do everything that he's saying and it still might not work. So. Yeah. It's, it's honestly just, it's a numbers game. It's a gamble. And when, when our doctor did call us, he was like, look, it is a numbers. It's all numbers. Mm. So it didn't work, yes, but it's, there's no reason why it didn't work. It's just a percentage of success rate and you didn't fall into that percentage. So there's nothing really that you can hundred make it 100% going to work, but you can do little things in your life to that will increase your, your chance. Your chance. So there you have it guys, um, there is our video for our IVF cycle and I hope it helps anyone who might be going through it or is going to go through it. It's not too, it's not scary at all. Like, as I said, the, the injections are the easiest part. So, um, yeah, sorry if you're scared of needles and you just had to watch that as well. Um, but we hope it helps. We really do. And if you're going through it, we hope you guys have a really successful outcome mm. and all the babies are made and everyone just gets a baby. I know that this journey can feel, you know, you can feel on your own. A guy can feel on their own as well. Um, and finding like a, couple, a little bit of advice from something that's probably not spoken about, very cliche because everybody talks about that, but something that's not spoken about um, and that's held a little bit internal, maybe this might you know, be able to help you through your journey or help you through your positives and your negatives. So thanks for watching guys and hopefully next year at some point you'll see um, a pregnancy post. That would be great.